my name is Jake Stallman, and this is, and I'm Matt Heater. And the title of our experiment was Sand Content of Soil versus Wheat Germination and Early Growth. And basically, the purpose of our experiment was to determine whether the soil or the sand in the soil had an effect on the growth. And our research, we we intend to help out agricultural industries so that they can become more efficient and improve their crop production and growth. In our intro, uh, we fi figured that soil is an important part of uh, wheat growth, and since soil is so important, we wanted to see what different types of soil, uh, different types of soil, uh, how it affect the wheat growth. Uh, and we decided to pick uh, sandy soil, and we wanted to know if sandy soil would help the wheat grow or would it uh, decrease, make it grow worse. Uh, we found that one bad uh, thing to uh, sandy soil is that it doesn't contain uh, any nutrients and nutrients are important for plant growth. And I was able to find this information in an a academic journal called Effects of Addition of Sandy Soil Chemistry and Long-Term Plot Experiment written by Jay Seasban. Uh, uh, even though sandy soil doesn't have a lot of nutrients, there are some benefits to having uh, sandy soil. Sandy soil can help with aeration, which is when air or carbon monoxide cycles through the soil. It can also help with drainage of soil, and it can also help uh, easy passage of the roots. And I was able to obtain this information in another academic journal called Assessing Potential of Biochar for Increasing Water Holding Capacity of Sandy Soil, and this was written by A. Basso. I said that drainage was a good thing, but it can also uh, be a bad thing too. Uh, if there's too much drainage, uh, the water runs through it too fast, and it dries out the soil, and plants need water for them to grow too. And uh, I found this information uh, that was also written by A. Basso in the same article. Uh, we found another article that was uh, written by K. Uh, Jack Jazek, uh, and it uh, was called Effects of Included Compaction on Change in Soil Properties and Wheat Productivity Under uh, steady, uh, Sandy Loom and Sandy Clay Loom. And this article showed suggested that sandy loom soil uh, helped the wheat grow. And with all this information, we uh, made a, hypo a hypothesis that the control group would do the best uh, because it had the, it would have the most nutrients since, since there was no sand in it, and nutrients are really important to plant growth. Okay, so basically with our materials and methods, we had 15 pots that we planted um, with three pots in each level. So there's five levels times three pots in each. And we had a control level, a level one, a level two, a level three, and a level four and each of them had a different amount of sand that was added to the content of peat soil. And so our control had 750 milliliters of peat soil and zero milliliters of sand. And the level one had 650 milliliters of peat soil and 100 milliliters of sand. Our second level had 550 milliliters of peat soil and 200 milliliters of sand. Our third level had 450 milliliters of peat soil, 300 milliliters of sand, and our final level, level four, had 350 milliliters of peat and 400 milliliters of sand. And each, uh, each of the 15 pots got the same amount of water, which was 50, 250 milliliters every day, and they were planted with 10 wheat seeds to keep everything um, exactly the same, so there was no bias or anything. And um, for each day of the first week, we watered the same amount to every plant. And then by the second week, we began watering once every two days. And um, after two weeks of our observations, we uh, pulled the plants because we believed we had enough data to get our results. And we measured the plants. and. Um, all of the concentrations were based on 750 milliliters of material altogether. And the materials that we, eat, uh, we used were sand, soil, pots, seeds, beakers, and water. 
All right, in our results, uh, as you can see in figure one, that the uh, third concentration of soil was the highest, even though it, was, it wasn't a lot, but our results showed that. And our control group was actually the lowest, and it maintained the lowest throughout the whole, the whole entire experiment. Uh, and during this experiment, we actually had an error occur in one of our pots where nothing grew. And there was just one pot. Every other pot grew except for this one. And we believe that this, this happened because we actually forgot to plant seeds into it. And that's just what happened in that one. <clears throat> now moving on to our discussion. Uh, after we actually took a look at all our results, uh, we found that our hypothesis was uh, really wrong. Uh, the control group was actually the lowest and we thought it was going to be the highest. Uh, the sand actually helped increase the, uh, increase the growth of the wheat plants. And the heavier the concentration of sand to peat ratio we had, the better growth we had until we got to about the fourth one and it tended to be just a little bit too much sand and the wheat plants tended to, they started wilting and I, it was probably due to the drainage and it was just running through it too fast. They weren't getting enough water. Uh, our results show that the best possible ratio was the third one. Uh, even though it was really, the differences were uh, small. And I'm sure we need to continue our research with that to keep it going. Uh, uh, sandy, we believe that sandy soil actually helps uh, by by allowing the roots to travel through the drainage and uh, the aeration, but if there's too much, then that can be really bad, as we were about to see in the fourth concentration. And I think that we needed to do a, a higher concentration of sand to see if, if we had more sand, it actually start to decline like it was in the fourth concentration. Um, as you can see from this picture, we had this is uh, the final day before we pulled the plants. Uh, the control then level one, level two, level three, and level four. And as you can see, level three right here, the uh, 450 milliliters of peat soil to 300 milliliters of sand was the best ratio that we found um, for optimum plant growth on the wheat. All right, do we have any questions? If you could go back and redo the experiment, what would you do differently? Oh, we wouldn't have missed the one plant because they made a big <laughs> yeah. outlier in our yeah, experiment. A big outlier. And I would have liked to have uh, had a bigger concentration of sand to pea soil because in the fourth one it, it started to de decrease, but there wasn't a lot of variation. So if we had a bigger one, like a more sand, we might have been able to see uh, more of a difference and maybe go on. And if we would have been able to do this a little bit longer, that probably would have helped too. I think we also could have had a um, a larger amount of plants to work with too and that would have gave us better results too an overall amount of data